Hello, my name is Bożena Głowacka. I'm working in the limnology department of ALS Winnipeg. And today I will talk about radon testing at ALS Winnipeg. So what is radon? This is a chemical element with symbol Rn and atomic number 86. This is a radioactive gas which lacks color, odor, and taste, so you cannot see it, you cannot feel it, you cannot taste it. To know if you're exposed, you have to measure the concentration. This is the heaviest known gas at room temperature, the product of radioactive decay of uranium, and its most stable isotope, radon-222, has a half-life of 3.8 days. The concentration is measured in becquerel per meter cube. This is the international standard unit. Or in picocuries per liter, which is the imperial unit. Becquerels per meter cube are used in Canada. Picocuries in li per liter used in USA. One picocurie per liter equals 37 becquerels per meter cube. This is a decay product of uranium-238 and radium-226. As the uranium atoms slowly disintegrate over billions of years, a host of radioactive byproducts are formed, like thorium-230, radium-226, radon-222, and the infamous radon progeny, or radon daughters, including lead-210 and polonium-210. The half-life of uranium is of uranium 238 is 4.5 billion years. Half-life of radium 226 is 1600 years. But half-life of radon 222 is 3.8 days. Why test for radon? Exposure to it is the second leading cause of lung cancer. Approximately 19,000 deaths in Canada are attributed annually to lung cancer. 10% of them is caused by radon exposure. Uh, smoking greatly increases the likelihood of getting lung cancer together with radon exposure. So what is the risk, how it happens? Radon and radon progenies, when are breathed into the lungs, they break down, releasing alpha particles. Alpha particles release small bursts of energy, which is absorbed by nearby lung tissue and can cause lung cell death or damage, damage the DNA. Cells with damaged DNA have the potential to result in cancer when they reproduce. The risk is proportional to radon concentration and time of exposure. In general, radon stays, stays settled in the lower parts of buildings, usually in the basements, because it's the heaviest known gas in room temperature. The concentration of it is highest in winter months when the pressure in houses tends to be lower than in surrounding environment. The warm air tends to rise up and the radon could seep from the ground into the building. Also, when the ground is covered by, by snow and, and frozen all around the building, the Basements are the easiest way for the radon to escape from the soil. From the soil, Manitoba, the province which we live in, is considered a hotbed for radon, with high concentration of it in more houses than anywhere in Canada. When we did validation of our method, we sent 10 duplicate samples into 10 random employees of the laboratory, and Five of them came with the radon concentration higher than Health Canada guideline of 200 becquerels per meter cube. 
The average labor in outdoor air is 10 becquerels per meter cube, and typically we see approximately 100 becquerel per meter cubes indoors. What are the factors of risk? Would be mainly smoking, but also exposure to radon, and this depends on the house construction and ventilation, and also amount of time spent in basements where the radon concentration tends to be the highest. How radon gets into the building is shown on the picture taken from Citizens Guide to Radon of US EPA. So it gets through the cracks in solid floors, through construction joints, through cracks in the walls, gaps in suspended floors, gaps around service pipes, the cavities inside walls, and from the water supply. Health Canada guidelines states that remedial measures should be undertaken in a dwelling whenever the average annual radon concentration exceeds 200 becquerels per meter cube. And the higher radon concentration, the sooner remedial action should be undertaken. If concentration is greater than 600 becquerel per meter cube, it should be remediated in less than one year. The guidelines of US EPA are much stricter, and they say to fix your home if your radon level is four picocuries per liter or higher, but even radon levels less than four picocuries per liter still pose a risk, and in many cases can may be reduced. And have to uh, remind that four picocuries per liter is 148 becquerels per meter cube. So this is approximately three quarters of Canadian guidelines. The only way to know radon concentration is to measure it. There are different radon detec detectors around. They could be divided into two classes. Passive radon detectors, which do not require the power to function, and to them belong electric ion chamber detectors, or EPERMs, which we are using. But on the market, there are also charcoal canisters, passive alpha, alpha track detectors, and charcoal liquid scintillation devices. The other class are active radon detectors, which require power to function, and to them we can find uh, continuous radon monitors and active alpha track detectors. What is EP EPERM system, which we are using in our laboratory. This is the Electric Passive Environmental Radon Monitor, which was invented and is manufactured by RAT ELEC. It was introduced in 1990, and it had the highest passed rate in all the radon measuring devices, which was shown by EPA testing from 1991 to 1997. So this is definitely the best device used for testing of radon. It consists of the electrostatically charged Teflon disk called electret, and they are basically two types of electrets, very sensitive short-time electrets and less sensitive long-time electrets. There is also ion chamber made of conductive plexus, plastic, actually it's paradigm cage, and surface potential electric reader used to read the voltage of electric before and after the exposure. We can see the S electrets which are fitted with the on-off mechanism, which allows to open the way for the radon to the electrode at the beginning of exposure and close it at the end of exposure. Here is the 
the cross section of S chamber. And we can see on the bottom of the cross chamber there is the electret. So two different kinds of electrets, and we also have different kinds of the chambers. S chamber is the preferred chamber for us to use because it has this on-off mechanism. Its volume is 210 milliliters. Um, how it works? Only the radon gas diffuses through the filtered holes into the plastic chamber. The progenies are not getting into it at this point. Inside the chamber, the radon and radon progeny which are formed inside the chamber are releases alpha particles which ionize the air inside the chamber. The negatively charged ions are attracted by the positively charged electret and reduce the electric voltage. The degree of voltage reduction is proportional to the radon concentration in air and to the time of exposure. Here we see different types of chambers. So this, on the left, there is the S chamber, which is fitted with on-off device. In the middle, we see the L chamber, which does not have the on-off device. So basically, the sampling starts at the moment when the electric voltage is measured and ends when it's measured again. And on the right-hand side, there is the keep keeper cap, which is used to protect electric from using voltage. The short-term tests last from two to seven days, and long-term tests from 90 to 120 days. We need to know the anticipated duration of the test in order to prepare the appropriate combination of electret and chamber. It is very important because if not the appropriate combination of electret and chamber is prepared, then the results could be biased. And also, in some cases, we will not be able to calculate the results. So please always let us know the anticipated duration of the test. With every electorate, we send the information sheet, which states the minimum separations, but also have the place to record the client name, sample ID, we record electric ID. It's very important to write down the location of the sampling, the city of province and province, because the, the calculations are corrected for the elevation and for the province or state. So this is a very important information. Also, crucial information, crucial information is the start date and time of starting of the exposure and the date and time of the finishing of the exposure. The electrodes should be located in the lowest lift in area of home in the basement, if it's finished, where people spend at least four hours a day. Should be in a location where it will not be disturbed, at least 20 inches above the floor. It can be higher. The S chambers have a loop which will allow to hang it from the ceilings. At least, it should be at least three feet from an opening in an exterior wall then we could allow air in. It could be further from opening, like in the center of the room. Should be at least 12 inches from an exterior wall where no opening exists. 
should have at least four inches of space around it to allow radon and radon decay products in. If you're sitting on the bookshelf, keep it four inches or more from the back of the cabinet. Should be out of direct air drafts, not where direct sunlight could strike the device, not in kitchens, bathrooms, hallways, or laundry rooms. If the test is shorter than four days, then the closed house conditions must be maintained during the test and at least 12 hours prior to the test. All exterior doors and windows should be closed over than normal entry and exit. Also, the short-term test should not be performed during the extreme weather conditions or when the extreme weather conditions are in the forecast. The electrodes are shock, temperature, and humidity resistant. Any dust particles will, will discharge the electrode, causing a false positive error. In unusually dusty areas, place chambers with electrodes in Tyvek bags. And any touching of electrodes will also cause a false positive error. So it is not advised to remove electrodes from the chamber because very easy is to touch it or a speck of dust could fall on the electrode causing the false positive error. The electrode voltage is read before and after exposure and the voltage decrease is proportional to radiant concentration and time of exposure. The concentration is calculated basing, based on the difference in voltage before and after exposure and time of exposure. And the results are corrected for electrode chamber combination, elevation, and background gamma radiation by province or state. We have a very strict QA program and 10% of samples are sent as duplicates. This is done by placing two electrodes in a twin box within four inches from one another. 5% of electrodes are sent as blanks in the S chambers when we are asking clients to not open the electrode to make sure that the electrode does not change the voltage, and 3% of uh, samples are sent to rat elec for spiking to ensure that our procedure is correct. The reader and reference electrodes are calibrated annually. The re reference electrodes are checked weekly, and we also do a monthly electrode stability checks. We are accredited by Canadian Association for Laboratory Accreditation for Radon Measurement, but in our department we also analyze mold and asbestos, which we are accredited by American Industrial Hygiene Association. And we also analyze phytoplankton, zooplankton, baiting invertebrates, and do aquatic toxicity testing, which we are accredited by Canadian Association for Laboratory Accreditation. This will conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Are electrics just one-time use, or is there a way that they're recycled, or...? The uh, electrics are reused. They're reused, you yes. You may, may want to repeat the question, version. Yes. The question was if the electrodes can be reused. Yes, they can be reused when the, they have still voltage above 300 volt. And when they fell below 300 volt, we send them back to rat elect to be replaced. Where is the next question is where is Raiden commonly found in Alberta? Ontario. In in Ontario in locations. I'm sorry I cannot answer this question. I don't know. 
Another question. Is there a handheld device that can be used to measure radon concentration immediately, radon present or not? Uh, yes, uh, they are continuous radon monitors uh, on the market, and these monitors will show the radon concentration minute by minute, but these are much more expensive devices than electrodes which we are offering. Next question, how to measure radon in water? Uh, there is a method of measuring radon concentration in water. We are not doing it right now, and with this question, please uh, contact RATELEC. Next question, can your lab in Alberta provide electrodes? Yes, the lab in Alberta will contact us and we will send the electrodes to Alberta location to Edmonton, Calgary or Grand Prairie. Next question. What testing procedure would you recommend for pre-construction radon testing? Would measurements of radon in construction site soils be reliable? I, I cannot answer this question, but you can, cons you can uh, construct the building to make it radon proof. They are methods to do it. Is the longer test method, uh, test period more beneficial than two or seven day test period, yes. In general, the longer tests give a better information. So three to four months is a very good test period. You can also test for entire year, but then a different combination of chambers and electrodes must be used. How much does a radon one test cost? Short-term short -term, term cost is $45 and long-term cost is $60. Next question, how accurate in the handheld device compared to electric testing? Um, it's hard to say, but I know that the electric testing was uh, was the best radon measuring device with the best uh, proficiency. So I cannot accurately answer this question. Sorry. Comment Radiant Matters is a Canadian environmental consultant that deals with radon. They have radon maps to review and have a great radon app for smartphone use. Yeah, thank you for the information. Is there any more questions? Okay, thank you very much.